Most of all of our cover crops fall under the MDA program. It's been proven that they absorb some of the nutrients in the fall, especially if you have a dry summer and your crops don't produce the maximum amount and take up all the nutrients that are out there. It does help absorb a lot of those and hold them over to the next crop. So I, I do think it's a big help in helping clean the bay up. We're near Roosburg, Maryland. We've farmed out here for over 100 years. We have a family farm. We raise mostly all organic grain and my daughter and son-in-law have a produce business on our farm. Uh, Bill Mason's a son-in-law and I help him out in the field on over 900 acres and on the several acres that we use uh, to grow our vegetables uh, for the summer produce stand. We actually started planting cover crops in the 70s and then in uh, the early 2000s we decided that we wanted to try some organic farming as we slowly converted our ground to all organic, we were planting cover crops on all our acres, as we do today. Every acre we till, we plant cover crop on. Out in the fields where things should start, and that's where cover crops are. So when there's a robust cover crop and it's growing, the water stays where it lands, and it doesn't run off. You have very little runoff. There's still gonna be some wet spots, but that's kind of the whole essence of what cover crops bring to the table as far as an environmental benefit and a benefit for the farmer. It's, it, it works in both, in both dimensions. In Maryland, a lot of the cover crops are planted in the fall after corn or soybeans or tobacco or vegetables. And it just offers protection for the soil and helps take up any nutrients that the crop might have left behind. I'm a soil conservation planner with Maryland Department of Agriculture and I work in the Queen Anne Soil Conservation District field office. MDA's cover crop program is a grant program that helps farmers and landowners plant cover crop by offering cost share assistance. It is pretty flexible. There's a lot of different crops you can plant and I feel like there's a good option for everybody because every operation is a little bit different and there's a lot of options that they could choose from. Generally speaking on all our soybeans we have that flown on with an airplane. We fly on a mixture of small grain either wheat or rye with clover. After we harvest the corn we disk the ground down several times and then so we aerial apply 10 to 15 pounds of clover right before we drill and then we drill in a small grain crop. A lot of farmers choose aerial because then they don't have to physically plant it themselves and so that frees up a lot of their time they could be harvesting the rest of their crops or planting a different crop if they wanted to do that. In the fall we're busy harvesting but we found it's very important to get the cover crop in as early as you can. You get more growth out of your cover crop and consequently you get more biomass or more nitrogen production. Uh, what uh, cover crops can offer us is a pretty stable and cheap source of nitrogen. Uh, you're talking around about a dollar per pound of nitrogen. Well, that's pretty consistent. And when you're talking about you can grow upwards of 80, 90, even 100 pounds of available nitrogen, that's nitrogen that you can use that season. Here in Queen Anne's County, cover crop is a really popular option. We typically get around 150 applicants each year and we normally have about 60,000 acres planted each year. If you get the cost share for it, it doesn't cost you a huge amount to plant them and uh, I think it helps your soil. If farmers and landowners are interested in planting cover crops or applying to plant cover crops, they can go to their local soil conservation district office. There's one in every county. They can enroll as little as five acres or they can enroll every acre that they till.